their host Paralympic Games four years ago. They have different designs here in Rio to be putting that right. It's a very short tournament, and you have only eight teams in it. So this preliminary round with two groups of four, this particular group, Pool A, this is a little bit of the group of death or the pool of death. Australia, Brazil, Canada, and Great Britain. Now, Brazil, it's their first time as the host nation in this competition, but Australia, Canada, Great Britain are all capable of getting on to the medal podium come the end of this tournament on the final day of the Paralympics. So to be taking on a heavyweight in this competition in the opening matchup, it just suggests how tight this is going to be because only the top two teams from the group will go through to the semifinals there is no extra classification match. It's the Canadian and the German in charge of this one. Pierre Alexander Briere and Alexander Schreiner, the two officials. They obviously have their technical commissioner as well, Ryan Gaudet. He is the Canadian. So it's now time for the athletes who have been out warming up and getting themselves prepared. This, the first matchup, it comes from Group A and wheelchair rugby. Well, we can talk because there are many games in which to share a conversation. But this is GB coming out here in red with the white trip being introduced out onto the floor. It has been nicknamed prior as Murder Ball. It seems to be evolving in a little bit of a different name nowadays. Some are regarding it more as combat chess with bumps and bruises. And I think that's probably fair. And sometimes, of course, a new sport that just comes in as an exhibition sport at the 1996 Atlanta Games in the Paralympics. That was just a trial at the time. The sport officially sanctioned in 1994 by the International Weir, uh, Wheelchair Rugby Federation. And then it becomes an official Paralympic sport in 2000 in Sydney. And from there, well, it has grown in popularity. It was a sport invented by the Canadians in the 70s, 1977, evolves down into the United States and then across to Britain. There you saw the coach, that was Paul Shaw. He's a former GB athlete across three Paralympics in 2000 in Sydney in Athens and also in Beijing. There is Riley Bat. He really is an exceptional athlete. He has such core strength, he has such determination, and he just has the spirit of a superstar. This Australian lineup, particularly because of their success in the sport, they are so affable, so agreeable, so humble, but when it comes right down to it, in the bite of a game, they are ruthless, and they will be doing their best to retain their gold medal here in Rio. Make no mistake of it, they've got experience. That man also a player himself, and he competed for Australia in Sydney Ladies and also and in Athens. And then going on and coaching to silver in Beijing and the gold medal in London four years ago. It'll be now time for the national anthems, first starting with Great Britain. There really is a sense of anticipation because this tournament comes 
later into the Paralympic Games, and we have had so much great success, attendances, interest, and focus across these Paralympic Games in Rio. They have been an overwhelming success, but here, one of the marquee events is about to kick off, and it really is a grand stage as both of the team's coaches come across and shake hands. This is the Australian lineup. Riley Bat number three, is one that you're going to be wanting to look out for. You're not going to miss them. It's going to be number 10, Chris Bond, as well. They are the two together, and they form the Killer Bees for Australia. They've got a number of players, Cameron Carr, continuing his Paralympic career as well. You see Naz Erdem number two, but there is Brad Dubberly, 35 years of age, a former athlete. Interesting story for himself. He was at age 12. He actually suffered an accident falling down a 50 meter cliff that led to his quadriplegia. And there, here is Great Britain. This is their lineup we'll be looking for. You've got Jim Roberts, who's going to be a handful, number nine, equally as well. This entire lineup, you've got Ayaz Buta as one to be looking for number 10. And there, Paul Shaw, who has been just brought in since that, by many deemed a disappointing performance in London. He comes and takes over the mantle and is the leader of this side for Rio 2016. They are going to miss some really significant talent. Aaron Phipps won really most notably for Great Britain, who has been a stalwart of that program. And he, not a part, he's retired and no longer taking part in Paralympic competition. And this, the lineup, Bat, Scott, Carr, and Harrison to start. And Scott, he is a long-term tenured player as well. He, the captain of this side. He's a not .5, the 34-year-old. It's Riley Bat, and he, a 3.5 classified player, 27 years of age. Coggan, Walker, Roberts, and Buta are the starting four for Great Britain. So this is a sport that is mixed gender, and you actually, just to quickly go down, you have a total of eight points allowed on the floor at any one time. The lowest level of function is classified with a lower number, so a not .5 is the lowest level of function. That's the lowest classification, up to a 3.5. And the cumulative score across the four players on the field of play at any one time cannot exceed the numerical value of eight. So we'll see as we roll on. The bottom line of this game is take that ball and go. And you use your teammates as best as you can. There's an eight meter goal line that they must travel across successfully with two of the wheels of their wheelchair inside the marking post. And you'll see those as well. Those posts are movable. So we don't need to worry that in fact, it's going to be running into a hard apparatus here on the floor. They are a big part of keeping obviously the play focused, but they need to for safety be collapsible and equally movable because these players will get into angles and they will come at that line with speed. It's full contact. It's a big part of the attraction of this game. And those who have watched it, that is why it gets the nickname of Murder Ball. But it really, that particular name doesn't give the full dimension of what is a very strategic particular sport and how they match each other up against the opposing classified players. But this, we are ready to go. It's Australia in the green and gold and the red and white, Great Britain, set to start this wheelchair rugby tournament from Rio. We have waited. We are a moment away. And underway as it will be taken by Australia. And they with the possession in Cameron Carr's hand to the other number three. And that is Riley Bat. The advancement up. This is great work from Australia. They'll go across the line first. And that opening score. This is Andrew Harrison. He has been here equally before great depth. He gets the opening goal. And so that for Australia, that little long pass and in and out this is the countermeasure from gb they use a little bit of a backdrop there and that will be the opening score that is jim roberts he's the 29 year old and so his classification for great britain he's a 3.0 so well, he really between him and Ayaz buta the two that are most likely to do the majority of scoring buta trying to keep riley bat under control 
and they have to advance the ball quickly to get it over. They have 12 seconds in which to get it over the halfway line. They have a 40-second shot clock in which to score. And every 10 seconds, they must bounce or pass the ball in order to maintain possession, or in fact, it's a violation. Australia have called a timeout. We have four eight-minute quarters to play in wheelchair rugby. Not a whole lot of break between the quarters, just two minutes and five minutes at halftime. And Deberly has come across, he's got a pretty cool sense of humor, in fairness, is coming across these athletes over the last five years, first meeting them in 2011 in Cardiff, Wales, and being involved in their international pursuit, but they are, well, they're just an inspiration and equally a very impressive outfit. The Australians, GB, are always in and amongst the hunt, but here is Riley back. He will take it forward, and he is just going to slip screen himself all the way down, and he'll score. And he has nailed it across the line, and that'll be his opening point. So the players just getting wrapped up in each other. And they now just getting back upright again. You just see the power from Raleigh Bat as he will just cut through this defense. And his speed really is his number one asset. And he's been so dominant at the sport already. He is the first and the youngest ever to appear at a Paralympic Games. 15 years of age he was in Athens back in 2004. And he moved from a classification then of 2.5 up to a 3.5. And he says that's probably been the most difficult thing he's ever done because it affects his floor time, his game time. Because of being a different classification, the coach has to look at his lineup differently as to how to assemble his personnel of four out there. But it's Roberts that has scored now twice. And he will put it on the board. And GB right tough in just over a minute. They both have a couple of scores each so bat is going to be hemmed in this is part of the chest trying to take it away from him Utah can get back and take this away from Harrison so the way they trade off against each other it's bat who's trying to release himself as the higher classified player and he would just take it to daylight and across the line one more time he is that man that will just continue to pound that score line for Australia and there is his running mate that is Chris Bond he's the other part of the killer bees bat and bond as it's Roberts now a quick transition and a goal or rather that's a try effectively though the official name is just the point for each one of these scores because wheelchair rugby is actually a combination of a number of different games there's an element of American football in it handball basketball some might even say ice hockey and equally, as you talk about American football, well, rugby is really kind of the, the packaging name for it, but it is its own sort of hybrid of a number of sports. And it has really, it brings that distinction with being such physically demanding and equally with that contact element. And as you're looking at Roberts, he really is the balance point and will be expected. Now, coming out is Bond and Bat. And these two together as a double play, they really are arguably the best two in the world at what they do. The way they work off each other and as now the experienced veterans that they are. Bond is 30 and Bat is 27. They could be in this sport for another decade plus the way they have performed in the opening stages of their career. There he is. Riley Bat will take it across the line. And he scores such great core strength. He's suggesting that there was a contact on the arm from the British player. And that's what he was appealing to the referee about there. And that's just putting the thought in the back of the referee's head because it may not be that play, but it's just down the line, the slow erosion of players that are stripping at him, trying to take the ball. There is Ayaz Buta will score now for TV. And he, with his opening point of the match, and he puts it on the board. So trying to lock in the Australians. They've got 12 seconds to get it across. The scoring clock has been met. They are across. And as he said, the total of 40 seconds in this possession. 
The clock doesn't start until the ball has been received in bounds. And you see 20 seconds on the play. This back to Bond. Bond is just going to think about it. They have to in this particular scoring area. And they've got to keep moving in there. And they can't occupy that for too long. And there is Riley Bat again. He has now four goals. Quickly played up, and Bat's not going to chase too hard. He's going to let Roberts take this one the full length of the floor. And Great Britain are finding the measure right now of Australia. And very calm is Roberts. This is a good omen. They know that, in fact, well, Australia are favored in this matchup. But there's been a changing of the guard in Great Britain as to the construction of this team. As they say, new coach and a little bit of a, a revamp as this is Vaughn. He'll take it all the way down, waste no time to take the score across the line. Down is Ayaz Buta. He gets himself put back upright. So Buta, he was born with Robert syndrome, a rare condition which affects the growth of bones in the arms and the legs. So his impairment is a limb deficiency. He's a 2.5 classification as Ayaz Buta. And he's got one point already. The other four belonging to Jim Roberts. So they will really do the scoring. You've got to make sure that all of the wheels are back into the field of play before you receive that ball back. But it has been Australia who took that opening tip, who have led the scoring so far, have always been a nose ahead. But there's a contact, and the contact cannot come behind the axle of the wheelchair. And you see what happens there. They catch Roberts from behind, just right there. That's a hit and a strike. And the different players, obviously, with different construction for their wheelchairs. Roberts has a wheelchair that's more rounded on the bumper and on the wings, so that he's got greater mobility. And so that will lead to a penalty to Bond. So they'll be down a player. It'll be four against three now for Great Britain. So he's just in there for a minute or less. It will be less than that. You can count on GB being able to convert. They've put on their female player, and she will get the floor. This is Coral Beatty, and she's, she's a really thoughtful player. Excellent movement. She uses that front bumper. It's quite extended for her number 23 for Great Britain and that's just to allow her to do the blocking some of the striking to be in the way and also just creating just further congestion sometimes for the Australians in which to have to navigate her so she's a lower classified player so this the advancement quickly Bond will come back he's on the floor and after that score from Great Britain it goes back to four on four play and Bond again has converted it that's his second point so seven to five and this is the contact looking for the exact call coming up against number 10 bond so it is roberts with the goal it is seven six officially as you see there now and gb with the responsibility in which to take it the full length to try to level this match the advancement up to coral Beatty. this is oh my it had to be taken into her possession and in control to go across that line and she lets that one slip away she knows it and that's a play that she can take but that's just the speed and the presence of the backtracking Australians just making her a little bit uncomfortable feeling and hearing the noises almost like helicopter propellers just hunting her down and that one she just could not reach and then you can see it again there is Bat who's opened up now a two-point score in favor of the Aussies. So this lineup looking a little bit different now. Jamie Stead out there. It's up to Roberts. Coral Beatty is also an option, but Roberts is going to tuck this one and he's going to put it to the backside. This is Stead. Stead's got to get inside that post. And you saw Bond, that was Bat actually, came back and shoved him into that post. And that effectively knocks him out of play. And even though he's been shunted, by Riley Bat. Bond is the first contact. There's Bat who just rams him from behind like a battering ram. That is okay, that contact. It's just if you come in from the side of a player behind the axle, 
that is where it's deemed as an illegal hit and will lead to a penalty. And Vaughn, as you say, they are ruthless. They show no mercy, and they take that from one end and convert it, and now they're three points up. Vaughn's story, an interesting one as well. well. He's been a part of this side now, wins that gold medal in 2012 in London. But he developed leukemia at the age of 19, and that led to infection and gangrene and then the amputation below the knee of his legs. So this, for Great Britain, the response, and it will be converted. That's the opening goal for their number 12. That is Jamie Stead, who has scored. GB, love a good party, love good international sport. They are here in great support as well as expected. So only eight teams in this tournament, two groups of four, and as I said prior, just the top two teams go immediately to the semifinal round as well. Third and fourth in each group. Both the third place teams will play against each other for that fifth place classification. And the last two teams in each group after the preliminary round, they will battle it out for seven. So no crossover, additional game. This is just a five day tournament. And you've just got to be ready to start it on time. And right now it has been Australia with just a nose ahead just taking advantage of that opening possession, that turnover where they held GB back. And this is Riley Bat just trying to manage the remaining seconds on the score clock. As they've got the player coming out of the penalty box area. They had two Australians looking to mark him. And it really is just about game management as to where the players are on the floor, where they're coming out from after the try has been scored, the point has been scored. So it's all a little bit of the strategy that we'll gather and we'll share as the match goes on. It's a timeout, though, as this is the GB really needing to have a good thing before this gets further than three points, the advantage to the Australians. Ayaz Buta with the ball and across this line into the offensive half. They've got just over 25 seconds still remaining on that 40 second scoring clock and Buta just bouncing that ball, keeping it alive so he can retain his possession. Up front and a new score for Great Britain. That is into number four, Gavin Walker. Nothing about Vaughn as he takes that one across the line. Got those piercing blue eyes, and you almost feel sometimes like he's looking right through you. There's just one thing they have in mind, and that is scoring points. And it's all about retaining that gold medal that they claimed. But this, they got a silver in Beijing, did the Australians. They finished fifth in Athens, and in their hosting of the games, the Paralympics, when this officially became an event in Sydney. Well, they end up finishing second with a silver medal, and Roberts gets upended. He's unable to finish the play, and they do not record that as a score. So again, both that and Vaughn just double teaming, and they are doing their best to create carnage and destruction. And Roberts thought he was going to get across the line. He was just a nose away. And then he's upended, so needing the support to get back upright again. And it's a little bit different. If you've been watching wheelchair basketball, these particular wheelchairs are heavier. They're heavier because they take so much more contact. They're designed differently to protect the athletes. Because if you're coming in at the speeds that they are, look at that. That's basically, it's a little bit of a car crash, isn't it? Where you're forcing your way through. So these chairs need to protect the athletes equally. They have more metal on them. They have more weight, and therefore getting upright isn't as easy. So it's a combination of mobility, the design of them, but equally, they're like little tanks that they need in which to protect themselves. And it will be up to Roberts across the line. He'll score. So this back and forth. Roberts feeling a little bit frustrated. And 
although it's only the score line that we see, you only get one point for each score. So those are effectively three different possessions that they need to take advantage of. And you need to see how quickly they power across the line. It's four now with that score from Vaughn. And that's tough against a world-class side like Australia. And they know that even early in the match, GB. Advancement, Ayaz Buta, he gets past the first man, but Roberts is right up against Vaughn. He'll have to spin back, and he goes in the teeth of this defense. He's trying to get the Australians to turn the opposite direction so he can just take an easy score, but nothing is coming easy right now. As the double B's bookend, this goal line for Australia. The pass to the backside for Ayaz Buta, and he will score. He's across the line. So the good feed, advancement, and the keeping an O's for one another as double digits for Great Britain. This competition, or this particular venue, 14,500 is the capacity for wheelchair rugby. It has been the home for the men's basketball tournament during the Olympic Games and also the men's and women's wheelchair basketball competition that has now gone on in the tournament. They've gone on to their quarterfinals and now into their knockout stages. So they go to the Rio Olympic Arena, setting the stage for this to be the only venue for wheelchair rugby in the Olympic Park in Rio. And it's been a timeout now called by GB with 50 seconds. And Australia are feeling good about what they've been able to create and what they've been able to execute so far. Seven goals so far for the 27-year-old. And when you read down his list of achievements and what he has done in the sport, it really is, it's, he's kind of a, a one-off in the what is a young sport. The Paralympic Games started in 1960. This comes in 40 years later officially in Sydney. So it's really at its pioneering stage still 16 years in. And he has been the shining light of the sport, most dominant player of his kind but Great Britain have scored it's another point for Roberts but it's time out for Australia but to read down for Roddy Bat named the best 3.5 class player of the 2016 Canada Cup that was in British Columbia received the Order of Australia medal in 2014 and then it's just the most valuable player across all the tournaments that he's participated in and then he's had the opportunity now to be a gold medalist a silver medalist and he's right in the height of his career. And we'll be looking to lead this side right back to that metal podium again. You mentioned it's really interesting how he commented on that classification from 2.5 up to 3.5, how that really affected how he could play. And that was as a teenager, 15 years of age, when he was in Athens. Deberly has come across, so they have to equally submit their line changes. And you see the cards in his hands there, just making sure that it's clear. Many language barriers that the bench officials understand who the personnel that he wants on the floor will be. This one will get away. And it's a pass inbound from the Australians. So now Great Britain, and you see the hands going up amongst the Australians. But this now It'll be taken by number four for Great Britain on the inbound. And that, of course, that is Gavin Walker. Puts it into, oh, he's lost his wheel. And that's, that's going to be tough. So it looks worse than it is. They still do have caster wheels. You just look there, the orange ones, that, that'll just pop your wheel right off. And um, he's still fine, but obviously the bigger wheel, they move quicker with less effort if they're using that. And it will just, as it comes on now, just inch above those caster wheels. And you see as well, Yuta with a little bit of a smile about it. You almost feel half naked when you lose your big wheel. So the inbound now again for GB. We just allow that as 
one of those technical timeouts. They'll roll out of this one if they can. This score needed, can they get it across? They cannot. And Bat, that just went beyond the line before he touched it. And you see the, the conversation going on between Buta and Walker. Yeah, you know, Walker's frustrated about that one. He's the 32-year-old, a 2.0 classified player. He equally knows. So you took it though, look at those two chances for Great Britain. The one earlier in the matchup to Coral Beatty and that one into Walker. It's a one-point game, and that really is the difference in these matchups of the top nations in the world. Roddy Bat, he is ultimately a battering ram, but he will have to give that one up before the sounding of the horn at the end of the first quarter of play. It's Australia who were expected to start well. They have done so. They forced a few mistakes from Great Britain in that opening quarter, and they will claim the first lead of the match at quarter time. It's 14 for Australia, Great Britain 11. Three more quarters coming up. Just a two-minute break between these as both sides will just warm up their tires like Formula One cars as they have a timeout and a breather. The match stats so far, defensive fouls, they both claim one of those apiece. The penalties, really not a factor in it. And the flagrant fouls, not so much an issue. There is one taken by the Australians, but they'll give those up sometimes in order to just make sure they, they're letting their opponents know that they are there and they'll be there all day. It can become a game, a little bit of intimidation as well. And it's not every player as is willing to get involved in the physical stakes that come with wheelchair rugby. And there, the long flight, some of the looks at the advancing passes. Just about trying to take the easy points when they're available. Both sides did that, but Australia just a little bit better in the opening eight. And there again, confirmation of the score. It will be Great Britain with the inbound as the Australians took that opening tip. So they move it into Roberts, and they think about if they want to attack this defense, it's just lying in wait for them as a group of four, or do they want to try to spread them? Bat is out there, Naz Erdem as well. And they have Jason Lees awaiting this on the near side. Jaden Warren. Some new blood to this Australian lineup. He's a 3.0, 22 years of age. So this into the youngster. So he will run this one as best he can. Here he comes, Jaden Warren. The offload into Roddy Bat, and he just explodes on the on-ramp. Takes this one again across the line. And he makes it look quite easy. I think those that maybe are just watching this for the first time realize this is quite an easy game. But easy doesn't necessarily, as far as maybe a simple game, is not easy. I think those are two different things. Simple, yes it is. Just take that ball and go. But it becomes complicated because a lot of the battle goes one-on-one -on -one against the power of the opposing athletes, trying to outthink them. And then you've seen a couple of those drop ball opportunities that if you don't convert those well you end up just putting a lot of pressure on yourself and it really there is a lot of room with four on four to try and make it all the way up the length of the floor but this is some of the obstacles being put in the way by GB and there couldn't quite find enough of them or equally big enough for Ronnie Bat again he will score so he's on nine goals already and Roberts out there. This is some good movement from Jamie Stad. He'll take it right across the line. And he's just going to pop it in. And there the score. We've seen it this time. 
from number four, Gavin Walker. He's pretty calm about things. You saw the exchange that was going on between him and Buta. That's just intensity, wanting to win, wanting to be as perfect as you can be. Bat, you need to catch him early. If you don't, he'll be, give you trouble. Roberts will reach in. He's popped it over. This is the Jason Lees. The offload to Warren. That's a great play from the Australians. You think you've got him boxed into the phone booth, and they have already had a prepaid card and made the call. It is Jaden Warren who scores his opening goal. Roberts with some daylight in and behind. Bat, Bat will just toe in behind him as he accepts that Roberts will score another one. So there, now with eight. So, but it's the other secondary scoring that is coming from Australia right now. Chris Bond has six. And they haven't got that, GB. Need a little bit more if they can get it going out of Ayaz Buta. Here is Roddy Bad advancing it up to Warren. Now he's becoming a little bit of a secondary threat. He has his second point. And he equally has a pretty snazzy hairdo, too, as he's sporting the black headband. But this will be Roberts to take it all the way down. And he'll score. This leaves that there on the floor. Calmly, he has taken care of the business that he has been asked to perform so far. Almost GB forcing Warren out of the court again after it had been inbounded. They need to catch him early. Bat will just open up this right wing. And then he's now just on rails. Oh, that really is pretty. It's the speed, it's the wavering, it's the slalom, and it's the timing where you almost want to see Great Britain just throw on the brakes but because they don't know which way he's going to go, they keep moving, and then he just slips in behind you, cuts back across, and there really isn't much they can do about it. But that's a better point taken there by GB. And so Jimmy instead will just put that through. The give and go to Jaden Warren. So he has come out here and replaced Bond in a sense with Roddy Bat. So he's a 3.0. And the classification of Chris Bond is a 3.5. They'll just make a few adjustments with their lineup, and that's their, their double trouble right now. Here he comes again. And Bat at the end accepts that he's not going to be able to get to him in time. And instead, we'll just put that one across. He's the 22-year-old. So some new look for Great Britain. We talk about Aaron Phipps was an outstanding player for them that has since retired. And you see that. I think Bat goes out there. This is going to be Great Britain's ball. It will be. And Bat sort of challenging it, but that had already happened. So we haven't seen. Now you're looking at number 22. That's Chris. Or rather, that is Matt Lewis on the bench. He's a 3.5. So he's another option for Australia. So this is huge. This will bring this when he goes across the line here. Roberts has got it within one now. And Roberts quoted before the tournament just talking about how he was really attracted to this game. The possibility of physical contact really appeals. It's a huge part of wheelchair rugby's appeal, he says. He says sometimes the way the Paralympic athletes can be treated, they get mollycoddled. So this is contact, which immediately drew him to it. They sometimes try to wrap you in cotton wool a little bit if you're in a wheelchair. This is not a game for that. And so you've got to admire that spirit, that vigor. I think everybody can't help but sort of appreciate athletes that are wanting to maybe put themselves in harm's way and willing to take the bumps along the way, sacrifice a little bit in order to reach their end goal. Of course, for Great Britain, it's to get on the podium. And rather than saying a gold medal, I think it's getting to the podium first. To come from fifth to first in one tournament would be a really significant turning of the guard for GB, but it's not impossible by any means. Jordan, there he is. Jaden Warren puts it across the line again. But there really is a, a handful of teams. It's the Americans right now that have been ranked as number one overall coming into this tournament as far as their play in the last four years in the Paralympic cycle. But flip a coin. It's going to come down 
to these little points in a match where it's 22-20 for Australia and Roberts is going to have to architect another score here but then it's the defense that we haven't seen quite enough of yet from Great Britain they need to employ that the feed inside and going across the line with the wheels before the ball had arrived is what the violation is there being called by the official so you have to be in control in those areas first of all before you well with the ball rather before you go across the line so you'll see the players try to force you out and push you out before you receive that ball for that exact reason so you've got to be able to hold your area and hold that strength in your chair Riley Bat as a result of that defensive stance and benefiting from the no score he'll want to increase it back to three again he's one against two I almost feel like he's gonna just bunny hop over both those two defenders defenders he's capable of great things he does a 360 jig and this he's run into his own player he's got lots of time still but you see them just they're opening up a little bit of room and there is Riley Bat saw the screen being formalized they can't go into that scoring area for longer than three seconds so the defenders could be in there but the offensive players so that works and makes sense because if you have all of the seven players without the ball in there it's be pretty tight quarters but this will be Great Britain to take it on the way back and they score keep it within two and 320 remaining in the opening half good contact there but the overload and then the overlap is into the hands of Bond. So three points again, clear. Good power move from Roberts, just to spin. He had a lane down the back side here, or on the near side of court. But he just took advantage of it. There's no sense wasting any time. They can get a stance here. This is where they need to do their work early. And you see the screen already coming in. They're now going to stay with bat, and then you've got Bond in behind, and it really is a thankless task, as he's just going to score again, use the space available to him. Up now for Stead. He's really going to have to get going once you got bat on you. He'll stick his hand in there too, pop it out. You can do that, just dislodge it. Now it's a race. He's got behind. He's going to strip it right off him. And boy, he's thirsty and hungry for that ball. He's going to score it. You see him just clenching to himself. That's just bulldogging. That's straight bullying your opponent. And which is totally allowed in this game. You put that ball in your lap in hopes that you can protect it. You can't lock it down. But you see that bar there across as that just holds it in that area as you do all of the powering with both of your hands and arms. And really it is almost like a little basket in there. And it wasn't quite concealed well enough by the Briton. And he just sticks the knife in and jars it loose. It's a different chair. If you look at what Bat's got, he's got that crossbar front. That's not what Stead's got on his. So just, Stead is a lower classified player and a different design chair for him. He's a 2.5. So he's got maybe a little bit of a longer bumper at the front, pretty much similar in fairness, but he just prefers that style and that just suits his characteristics. So looking for substitution of personnel. There's going to be the penalty. It's a foul against Chris Bond. He's no stranger to the penalty box. He goes in there and limbers up a little bit. So he's in there for a minute or less. It generally is almost an automatic. I can't think of a time where I've seen the team not score with the four against three advantage. And you see the British player, Coggan, is waiting for him. And that's just to disrupt him, getting back onto the floor. Because he'll come and probably be the inbound here in a second from Roberts. So it's just to mark your opposite number. 
making sure that they're back, and just making sure you're keeping a track on them. Because once you allow Australia to get their wheels rolling underneath you, just like this right here, they're very difficult to stop. Bat would just punch right into Roberts and then just propel himself off. And you see, it's a pretty free score across the line. Now Roberts going to do the same. Coggin with the screen coming in. This the big bashing hit from Bond. He almost popped Coggin right out of his chair. And then Roberts, he's going to throw on the brakes here. Bond has done some good work. So much exertion going on there from Bond just to be able to provide that. And it's a player leaving the, the field of play. So all of that good work, and I think that was Coggin that was shunted out by Bat. So off of everything that was going on there, one-on-one -on -one between the two, higher point players on the floor. In comes Bat and just pushes one of the lower classification players right off the floor. This has been sent the whole way. Here it is to Nazardum. Nazardum will pick that up. Oh, he won't score though. He doesn't bring it with him. And that was not intentional. <laughs> you, see, you see his frustration. He's not happy about it. He's got the full welding gloves on there. And he just couldn't hold it. You're not sure if he had enough feel, and that's frustrating, isn't it? It was in his lap, and he just turned. Just turned to look away. He was sensing the pressure coming from the British athlete, and it just wasn't securely enough in his lap. And so that's another point about Bat's chair. He's got that cross member, a crossbar across, and then you don't see it with any of the other, and that's just how he has been able to get his chair constructed. That makes it a lot easier. Of course it does, where you're not having to worry about the possession of that ball so much. So in, there was contact made. Where will the foul be assessed though? The penalty. And so they're looking to call a timeout. So the Australians will benefit from that. So the athletes in this competition can have impairments in their lower limbs, also in their in their upper limbs as, limbs as well. And you see there with Raleigh Bat, with his digits on his, his right and left hand, he wears the glove. The glove is, of course, just to reduce the friction of all of that pounding and constant driving of the wheelchair. So everybody really, for different reasons, wears either gloves, full gloves. He goes with just the, the small sort of latex gloves at the end of his fingers and protecting his hand, but more for grip because they, their hands are full of stickum by the end of the matchup. This is Roberts working to try to open up some room here. He's got Bond and Bat just giving him a headache. And can he get in? The feet, they could back it across the line. They could do it just the same. And there is a little bit of the moonwalk. And they needed those. That for number 22, that is Chris Ryan, the captain. And it will be turned over. They're not going to be able to convert it as quick as they would like. But it's back within two. And not giving up an easy point there at the end of the first half. That's important for Great Britain just to keep things within check. So it's a five-minute break here at halftime. But officially, it's Australia 27, Great Britain 25 at halftime in the wheelchair rugby. And the stats so far, defensive fouls. Been a little bit more aggressive in those situations. They've turned the ball over as well. Have Australia the steals. They had that one, you saw it as Riley Bat just put his hand in and was just trying to force it out. They've taken five penalties. So still there, within two. GB, of course, maybe would love those couple that look to be easy conversions. You could say that about Australia as well. Erdem had that chance there to go across the line. It didn't work. You see the taping going on on the hand of Riley Bat. He just wants a little bit of freedom for this half dime. Uh, we'll pause for a moment. It's the third quarter coming up right back at us.
So the crowd nicely getting into it in Carioca Arena at number one. And Ronnie Bat has locked and loaded. There you see how warm it is in here. It is getting warmer in Rio, there's no doubt of that. And the winter season from June through to September, we're just coming out of that officially, and it is getting hot. But it is hot already in opening day of wheelchair rugby indoors. And it's Australia 27, Great Britain 25, as we're just about to start the third quarter. It will be Australia with the opening possession. Bond into bat, just awaiting for the receipt of the ball from the referee. The horn is sounded, and GB awaiting in the weeds down in their scoring area. It will be bat, very deliberate, thinking about how they want to try and open up this four-pack of British athletes. Bond is an option. Bat, though, can just barge right through. And have they given him the score? Seemed like the whistle had blown. And they will give it to him. But it's a little bit of hesitation there. So eight meters he's got in which to get it through those two posts. Offloaded to Ayaz Buta. Buta can give some more offense. This loaded in, well taken by GB. And into their number 22 again. Been a reliable threat, Chris Ryan, with the last couple scores for GB. So that now, particularly with that opening possession, they've had their nose in front the whole time, have Australia. This man has led the charge. He's got 13 goals so far. And he in the gold medal match against Canada four years ago of 61 points they scored. He was well over 35 in that game. So it just shows you what he can do in any individual matchup of overall points. They're gonna count it. He is inside the post. Both his wheels go across and he has full possession of the ball. So bat story. Well, his ambition, of course, is to win another gold here in Rio, but he was born without the use of his legs. So it's a different story for every one of these athletes, whether it's by acquisition or whether it's innate. They all have the same opportunity now. So born without legs and then underwent a an operation to separate his fingers. He began using the wheelchair at the age of 12. And by 15, he was at the Paralympic Games. In 2004 at Athens, Dubberly. He's been down that journey as well, though, but he was, his impairment coming from an accident as a 12-year-old. They'll just wipe off the ball, make sure that it's as clean as possible and that we will be underway again. So of course, the perspiration from the athletes can cause an issue, but the secondary scoring right now, Bond providing a little bit more, that's reflected in the score line, but it will be Roberts to take it the full length of the floor. So every Paralympic cycle and the personnel utilized in your team, you have a nucleus of a program and obviously interchangeable parts and a few different components this time around for GB as it will be Bond who will just power that one across the line. Very easy score. And that's what these two guys can do. And everybody will know about them in this competition. There's no surprise that they are just going to come at you with a two-pronged attack and just utilize their other secondary parts. But they just fight fire with fire and just try to outmuscle you and don't even really have to be overly considered to just play a power game speed as well that takes it into his possession the offload up to bond and as soon as one has it the other one releases if they see that one is in trouble then they will come in and try to pop the opposition off of them so that they've got movement as good an ally as you could ever want to have. A wheelchair rugby teammate. Roberts tries to pound an opening. He's got that. The advancement up to Ayaz Butep. He could use 
but just getting himself rolling. He protects the ball across the line. Vaughn reaches in, but that for Buta, just his third goal so far. 15 to Roberts. And there's four now to Jamie Stead, so just need to keep coming with that Great Britain. Roddy Bat, the full length of the floor, weaves and winds his way for another score. Roberts up to Buta. He's going to get hunted down, though, two on two. The two higher classified players from each respective side involved in this little interchange, and it's going to lead to having to come and think about things a little bit differently. 15 seconds on the scoring clock now. Buta with the last man coming in. Can they come off the end here of Coggin? Coggin provides a screen there. And just wait for the right movement of personnel into place. And that brings about another score. And it's whether or not they can defensively execute here now. It's early that you've got to get to bat. He is up and gone. And across the line. So we talk about the employment of that crossbar for Roddy Bat across his chair. Because he's born without legs, he has a little bit more room. Obviously, legs would elevate the ball in his lap. And so he's able just to have that in a position. And that's a big part of why it's obviously legal and allowed. Not every player utilizing that. But this, you see where the crossbar is for Buta. He's not quite as big. So he elects to just utilize the construction of his customized chair too. So every story a little bit different as to why the chairs are designed as they are. Vaughn's chair is basically a carbon copy of Bats. He will take the ball back. This is just a straight execution and display of power. He'll score another one. So 11 for Bond, 17 for Bat, and then three other scorers, Warren and Harris. So just the two others, rather. And Roberts, now that takes him to 16 officially. Buta with five, Stead with four. And they do have Ryan as well as Walker on the scoreboard for Great Britain. Bat, just a little bit of an impediment there. He finds a way around an angle, forces his way through for another score. And it does look a little bit easy for him. I think easy maybe can be seen as a casual word, but it almost is as though he could just score at any point. Just one against an entire defense. That's the nature of his dominance in this particular sport. Down is Buta again, needing some support. He gets himself back and upright. And Vaughn, who has been in the penalty box a couple times today, he's just awaiting the chance here just to inbound the ball. So that, you're just seeing, they're trying to clarify just whether or not there was a, a penalty on the play. And it's been changed over. And this into bat. He protects the ball. He's got three Brits on him. He's got Roberts waiting. This could be turned over. Roberts is going to try to get to this one here. If he can, Bond, who is able just to hold that in. That's a big moment. We're just right to the edge of the cliff. Australia just do enough to be strong. And Roberts is trying to force his way. They're trying to shunt the player out. And that is the British player who gets moved out of play. And so, again, that's just the smarts from Australia. Just forcing out the British defender. In this case, it was Roberts. And as Bat arrives late, it brings about the reintroduction of a 40-second shot clock. And Bond trying to get it. So 
They're suggesting that's a violation against Roberts because he goes across the line when it was still in play and a possibility for the Australian point. And they deem that as a penalty, even though it's bat that forces him out. And that's the hard part of it. They're going to try and just take the precious seconds off the clock. Again, just awaiting, making sure that they've got Roberts controlled coming out of the penalty box. And keeping an, a watchful eye on him. And so this lead now has split to four points. And you see his shadow, Roberts. It comes in the name of number 10 from Australia. And if it's not him, it's that man there, Riley Pat. So they just are ruthlessly just keeping track of the British player Roberts and it will be coming in Coggin Walker and they turn this over it goes off of the hands of Great Britain and bat just making sure just to hit Walker in time so that he couldn't try and recover that ball and you're seeing just a little bit of a further opening in this scoreline develop circling around waiting almost like a shark as to when he wants to strike and bite this goal line he does it right there again just using his intention but his core strength Riley Pat is, is phenomenal you see some of the videos on YouTube of him and his journey surfing doing most everything he's an Australian farm boy and this now the chair for Walker just getting adjusted and making sure that he's totally comfortable. And he makes the inbound. It's a soft one into Roberts, but immediately Roberts is going to have to work against the double Bs. And this for Roberts, this is impressive. He just wins a wheel race all the way down the length of the floor. And that is just all upper body strength and just pounding with each touch to propel himself forward. Good contact there. I haven't seen a lot of that so far in this match. You see most of it coming from Riley Bat just trying to force British players either out of play or unlock them a couple times against one of the Australians so that they could make a passing play or at least create some motion. There's a big hit. As Bond and then Bat just runs Roberts out of room. He's going to get over the line, and that's exactly what's happened. You see how slight it is just over that center blue line. And you've got to make that play. And again, it's about reduction of time and space. And Bat does exactly that. So a timeout, and this really a pivotal part in this matchup. 2.25 remaining in the third quarter. A five-point spread. That really is five possessions in this sport of wheelchair rugby, and that, that's considerable, particularly when you're taking on the Aussies. Right now, it needs to be move time for GB. Now this is what's really a three-game tournament that sets up where you're going to sit come the end. And this group, with Canada in it as well, one of these teams, GB, Australia, or Canada. Brazil, probably the outsider in this group. So well, they're going to miss out in the semifinal position. And these games against each other, they're huge. So it's already in play. Bat telling Bond to go to the wide side, create some width to this attack. Forcing out, trying to create a little bit of a channel. He's muscled his way into a position. Just holding the area. And a violation. It's the turnover. And as you can see, just the indication from Bats is talking about just how they need to maybe rethink that approach. GB need a score, and then they need a defensive steal, a block. You're going to really be hard-pressed to run Australia out of time. You're going to have to take it from them. Advanced well, and this is a steal from Bond into a tight place. This is the breakaway, and this is what they do to you. 
They force you to have to open up to try to make plays, and then they read you like a book. And they knock that one down. It's a double blow from Double B. They steal it and score. It's almost like a pick six in American football, particularly at this point in the match. And bat again, just exhales as they've been able to force the GB mistake. You see the referees having a discussion. So just confirming exactly what the call is coming. Roberts just waiting for clarity on it as well. He's already had three Australians trying to take a bite out of him, right into him. No, he's just on an Australian island right there. And there's nowhere to go right now but to patiently wait for permission to be allowed free. Well, now that Roddy Bat leaves, both of those chairs have locked up Roberts. He's going to have to fight to get out of there. He is in a log jam. And this Walker will assume the responsibilities. He bounces it to keep that 10-second clock available. Bat comes in, contact on the arm. That'll lead for him sitting down. So they're going to really need to make hay now, Great Britain, from here. They expect to score with the, the benefit of the extra player now on the floor. There is Bat awaiting his opportunity to return. But... It's the next defensive sequence, so Nyes Buta. They're just as happy to keep Bat off the floor for the majority of this 40 seconds. Just so the other players have to work a little bit harder. And they also just get a little bit of a breather here. This is kind of what's happening too. Just a chance to collect their thoughts. And if they can just manage the score line, it's also 50 seconds. So there's a 40 second shot clock now available to Australia. So if they're able to come down and score, it at least leaves time for GB to have an offensive response before the end of the third quarter. Oh, that one will be an errant pass, and that's, that's a moment that GB can build from. So that's part of the management at the end of these quarters, too. So if they can convert right now, four against four with this inbound, Walker's got to make a good pass, though. Roberts is going to come across for it. He's got immediately on him. They offload it, go back to Ayaz Buta. So he's on his own here. And so they will try and utilize the remaining seconds here as best they can to reduce the window of response for Australia. They want to score, and then if they could equally get another turnover, this would be a real swing. Now the score for Australia, it's a 13-10 lead in the third quarter. And Great Britain actually win that second quarter, 14-13, after the opening from Australia with a 14-11 margin in the opening quarter. So they've called a timeout. So you see the discussion going on and just awaiting for it. So the timeout, just 30 seconds, is what they're utilizing here now. And so the reintroduction of play, it's just going to be simultaneous with the game clock, this possession. So this is, this is game management from Great Britain here. But they've got to convert. And now they're starting to run out of time. And leaving the floor, and I think, again, was that Walker or was that Bond? It was, okay, so it was Roddy Bat that leaves the floor when he's in that defensive area. And if you do that, that's a penalty against. As basically what you're doing is you're disrupting the opportunity for the offense to score. And just waiting there, he's across the line with 1.3. And that'll bring Bat out onto the floor. And Roberts now working to get back so that there is no further opportunity for Australia. So a little bit of gamesmanship there and equally just Ball retention and possession from GB at the end of the third quarter. But it's a scoreline now after the third period. And it's Australia 40, Great Britain 36. This is the wheelchair rugby in Group A. It's the first match of the competition.
So looking across the defensive fouls. The majority taken by Australia. The turnovers as well. They've turned it over more, but they've stolen it back a couple times. And then they've taken some, well, they've taken more penalties, seven to four. It's just really about their ability to control the game, though, as we have seen via Riley Bat and whoever is his number two running mate. They've been able just to keep their nose in front throughout the entirety of this match so far. Roberts, he's done his job. His scoring has been right there alongside. He's got 19 total points. Riley Bat has 21 after three periods. So just the two-minute break between the quarters, between the periods, and now underway again. This for GB could cut it to back within three, and they've let it just slip a little bit over the course of that third period. They need this. This is lofted forward, trying to chase it down, and this is Bond, I think, is the last one to have touched it. Oh, and I think they do just call timeout. They suggest that it was touched by GB. Roberts gets to it just before the line and calls timeout to the referee as well. So they give them the benefit of that, that he had already expressed that before he arrives at the ball. And so that will give the inbound opportunity here. And they retain 30 seconds on the scoring clock as well. Well, that's a tight plight. I almost thought as though it had not been touched, but Roberts... A better vantage point, of course. He knew that it had been touched by Walker. He had to get to it. A little bit of a cross block here from Buta. These two down low to Walker. That's a great play, and he takes it calmly in his possession. And across the line, the 32-year-old, as cool as a cucumber. And he grabs himself another point. So that's three now, three goals for Walker. As that's Coggin just getting himself... Reloaded over there in pit lane. Well, there was an indication of a substitution. I think that they are forcing Australia to actually fully utilize. It's actually the, the timeout, so they they have full timeouts and kind of half timeouts as well in the sport, as you see. Just them taking the rim off and the, the working on the equipment. That's expected to be done, of course, in these stoppages of play. But if a player does blow a wheel, they'll come out and just replace that wheel just as quick. But it has been the Australians here with the utilization of a timeout. And that's a 60-second one. So you have the fulls. Those are 60. And then the half timeouts, 30. And Dubberly just releases the troops. You almost see him quite casual in it this team knows him he knows the team they understand each other and they are going to run through this man Riley Bat equal Chris Bond Chris Bond does so well the body control is key just in the nick of time if GB could have got to that one that could have been impacting but you see the moment taken by Bond that's about speed about power and about a lack of fear going into the area plus he's a higher classified player he was more capable of getting to it with speed, corralling it, and then guiding his way down the floor for another Australian score. Buta, he's going to be hunted by both of them. And the advancement well taken. That's the trio of touches from GB as they move it around. Now they sense that both of the killer bees are in full pursuit. They both have the same 
Barber. As slick as a whistle, especially when they get sweating as well. This has been turned over. Great Britain with this possession could convert it. And now you're starting to see a little bit of apprehension in the Australians' body language. See the wincing going on there. That's the sweat just getting into the eyes. As much as they try to wipe themselves down, they had that timeout a moment ago. That is what's happening here. The temperature is increasing in Rio. And obviously it has an impact inside as well. This is a big venue, but it'll be another score for Roberts. The humidity is high, so this now within two. This is getting interesting. They're going to have to respond. The advancement up to Bond. The passing is just too precise. And that is back to Bond and another score. So in the next 6.49, we need to see consistent responses from GB. And then there's just going to be a turning point where either one of these sides cannot convert on their subsequent possession. And it will either increase and look more under control from Australia, or things are just going to get even a little hotter in here. Turned over, I think, and it's Roberts, the way he, he comes onto the floor. And they're frustrated, just little things right now. Unhooking the wagon of Great Britain. And these are just mental mistakes. That has just left now the chance to increase it to four. And that's an indication of it. Just it's a case of when Australia are going to really turn the screw. And they do just, again, bring another point on the board. You see he almost walks it across the line, doesn't he? Lifts his one side of his wheelchair up and over the wheelchair in his way, almost hurdles it. Up to Walker. He's been pretty useful in the last few exchanges. He's taken some pressure off of Buta and Roberts to score these open points. Bond in the bat. Can he get to it? Can Buta hunt him down? Get him boxed in here. This is what GB need to execute and put the Aussie on an island and leave him to think about how he wants to navigate these British shores. But it's from distance again. He has worked his way down to a position to be able to see just how he is going to leave. And he gets on his own boat and sets sail for another Australian score. Luta with the offload, this for Roberts. He'll take it. So it's not about the score right now. Can they stop Australia? They need to do both. Score and then put up a GB wall of defense. They need to get to them early. Can't allow the speed game for Australia. There's a turnover potentially. This is outstanding. You could bump it across there with just the fist. Blocked down. Well done by GB. And this could be a turning point in the match. Yuta, he has been forced. Can he get across the line? Pushed into that post though. So it doesn't get into the scoring area, and that'll switch things around. Riley Bat shaking his head. You see just how demonstrative they are. And he's suggesting they need to calm down. And then both sides a little bit frustrated. So have they? It was a turnover out of bounds. And then Australia electing now to use a full timeout again. So as a result of not being able to get it inside those posts, we've seen that probably three times so far today. And again, Deberly appealing to his team. Let's take a little bit of the air out of our own inflation here, gentlemen. We're getting a little too fired up. And Chibi, they needed to make that count. They know it. And every point differential in these matches could also become telling because that second position if Australia are able to go on and be victorious in this matchup that second position will be determined if there's a tie-breaking requirement it'll come down to the score lines the points for and against of the tied teams in the matches that they play not just gonna come down to who won 
It comes down to that point differential, and that gets to be a really tricky one. It takes a notepad and paper for sure come that time if it's required, but it's Bond who is going to score. We would go to extra time if we were tied at the end of this one. We'd go to three-minute periods until there is the determination of a clear victor. Roberts spinning, turning, trying to get away. The pressure ever relentless from the Aussies, but I just feel as though they've got something, GB, that they've slowed down a little bit here. And in a couple of these instances, they've been just a little bit outsmarted, outmuscled. The offload, there he is. Roberts comes through with greater speed, and he scores. But can they turn it over again? That's where they were back before that timeout and they could have cut it down to two they need to get to bat now and then the offload Roberts if he can get back for this one he's not the inside position from Bond and he scores again for Australia so Bond with 16 bat 23 and it really is Roberts on his own with 22 no other player for Great Britain into the double digit category four points today So that's an obvious area that needs development. He'll just force his way, though, through. That's a lower-pointed player who has that long bumper on the front. Almost looks as though it's got teeth on it. A little bit of a basket there that just can get into the wheelchair and disrupt, make life more difficult. But there is Bond one more time. And they've just found their wind right now. It looks as though... They've got their sail up, and they know exactly where they want to go. They've got their route chartered. So for Roberts, they're just as a group chatting as they're moving here, thinking about how they want to approach this defense. He'll just make an easy play around the end, and they relent. I think positioning more than anything that he had been able to find a gap in this Australian defense in the offload again. There really is just no stopping that combination. As soon as one gets it, the other is busting to open floor. Good quick ball movement here. This is Bond and Bat with the sandwich approach. And it will be Roberts. So this now within three. They need a turnover here desperately. GB got to push forward. And you see Buta, this is not a bad idea just to take a breather. This isn't intentional. That's just, you saw him get hit by both Bat and Bond up there in the middle of the floor and they popped them pretty good so they have there you see all the wheels over on the rack behind the players bench uh, wheels will travel they just bring them with them there's no sense trying to fix them you see that being done on the sidelines by their support staff just putting new wheels actually on the rims on the frames but their own customized wheels are ready just to be taken off the shelf and immediately installed. There again, strong work. That's why these chairs have to be built as they are. And they're as heavy as they are. Quick up to Ayaz Buta. He pushes himself and across the line. So within three, this has been a story. Have they in fact let their opportunity slip earlier? This could go long. I think it's going to be strong. It's right on through. And so this is a turnover opportunity. GB could cut it within two here. And you see quite a bit of frustration. It's obvious. They know that things could get a little bit pear-shaped here as well. Do Australia. If this for the red could be converted, he throws the brakes on as he tries to just convoy him out of the field of play, Butaz. 
He's got some room. He's got to protect that ball. The offload in for Roberts. He'll take it. He has to have control across the line. He's got it. So back within two. This is here still entirely in the balance. You see his hand shaking it out. He got pinched there by the wheelchair coming to get him. This is contact. And the indication from the referee. Just awaiting this call to be clarified. They bring it back. So it's the timeout for the equipment. It's Bond that's getting the attention. So he just, you see how easy it is to install them. Just pop that lug nut. And he's back rolling again. So in determining your personnel for a tournament like this, the Paralympic Games, so much more equipment nowadays, advancements in equipment, but equally in monitoring the speed, the power, the ability of the athletes. This will be taken by bat and controlled, settled down. He'll just be calm. He wants to utilize this clock as best he can from here. Back and forth, he'll go winding and weaving, and he's just, he believes that three on three, he can individually muscle his way into an area, and there he's found the lane. He'll score, puts it in, and he was right to believe so. So they could just be enough ahead to make this difficult to be recovered by GB, and it feels like that right now, but there's always the possibility of a twist in the tail. Butaz, the advancement up to Roberts. He's going to be one-on-one on one against Bat. This is just as a good an individual competition as you're going to have. The offload, the feeding, well taken. Walker's going to get hit, though. He carves himself right into the heart of this Australian defense. They have time, but not a whole lot of it. They want to score quick here. This, the backside, over to Walker. He should be able to convert. He does. They need to be in position to not allow this entrance pass go into the field of flight. This is key. Can they execute it? They gotta be able to push Bat out of the floor here. Roberts staying with him. The offload out to Bond. Can they hunt it down before he recovers it? He does just in time. He offloads. It's been turned over. And Roberts gets hit while he has it there. They do they call it over and back. Oh, that's tough. That's so tough on GB because Buta touches that. They were over in their defensive half. They recover it and they just get pushed, and that comes as a result of Riley Bat just bringing that pressure from the backside and just burying into his man. That's the frustration. Future, have a look at his wheels. They were just across the line, and that, that's devastating for GB if they've given it up when it looked as though they had created it. They're going to give it back to him. They're going to see it as a harsh call on replay because he wasn't really in retention of the ball, and it was really kind of a loose ball. I think that's why they give them the favor of that call. Now Great Britain with a chance here to respond. It's into Roberts in a minute and 35. He'll want to score quickly. Ayaz Buta on the backside. He's got to take it cleanly. He's across the line. Within, as you see, one point, 131. Have they got another defensive play in them? They've got to put pressure on Bat here. Bat is locked into an area, but he's come across the line. He's got room and he's got time, but it's Bond that they need to find. He will score again for Australia. They're two in front. And 119 remaining, this still can be played out a few different ways. The timeouts have been called more by Australia than it has been Great Britain. So Great Britain with a timeout or two still yet to utilize. And this works just fine. It's the timeout equipment, which there is no maximum to. And you're seeing a very calm look from the bench. This is their coach, Paul Shaw. And he's just trying to get the attention of the players saying if we can go up and score here quickly, we will be looking to execute a timeout. So Walker being given room all the way up. Walker will take it, and that's an impressive score. So they haven't utilized one as yet. So they're trying to get it into bat. They've locked him up, but again, they found him. And it'll be now you have to stay with Bond. As doing a good job staying with Bond is Walker. They're getting away here. Coggan is not going to be able to control Riley Bat in the defensive half. And he does it again. He's got a deck of cards now. 52 points is the total score for Australia. And the, well, exactly half of that. 26 right now, as you see. 
for Riley Bat on the board. Jim Roberts has 26-2, but it's the running mate, Chris Bond, with 19 that has just been able to set the tempo for Australia today. And how about that? They've turned it over. They just concede that score. And Bat with the goal, and this now given right back. And in the heat of the action, that's just, that's a devastating blow for Great Britain. They pushed it here as deep as they could and took this right to the latter stages. So the turnover, as you see from the throw in and from here, Raleigh Bat can just control this game. He's got time on a scoring clock. It's the overall game clock that matters. He'll continue just to work around. He'd be just as happy to see it all off, but he'll score. And now they're three points ahead. And that for Australia. That should pretty much sign it off. It would take an implosion. Roberts brings it back within two. 10.9 remaining. They're going to have to really get up tight from here. And Bond coming all the way to the length of the floor to inbound this ball. We'll just take reception of it there from the referee. You know where he's trying to get to. He's being counted on to get it in in time. You see the hand going. And it right into Riley Bat. The clock is now ticking. Australia have come out as expected as the one of the favorites in this tournament with the reigning gold medalist from London four years ago. They did it right in Great Britain's backyard in London and here in Rio in the opening matchup of this wheelchair rugby competition. They find a way, they get through to 53 points, Great Britain 53-3.